It's no secret Joe Biden, the Democratic nominee for president, is believed to have some underlying health issues. President Trump has referred to him as Sleepy Joe on numerous occasions, and many people in general have shown concern over Biden's health after a handful of interviews which appear to show Biden struggling to remember certain statistics or just saying things that seem out of whack. With that being said, in politics, two could play at that game, so those who are anti-Trump or pro-Biden tried to spin the narrative, claiming President Trump suffered a stroke or mini strokes at some point last year. The hashtags Trump stroke and Trump not well started to trend on Twitter, and to no surprise, numerous articles would pick up on the story, leading to the president and his physician to speak on what happened. Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking, did Donald Trump really have a stroke? How's it going guys? Jared Bronstein here with you today on Life's Biggest Questions, and although I know a lot of you guys seem to think that we hate President Trump here, well we do. All joking aside, I genuinely try to keep my personal beliefs and politics out of the content I make, which is why I evenly try to take shots at both Donnie Boy and Sleepy Joe. Be sure to stick around to the end of this one for some common replies from another video, but for now, let's get right into it. So we really just need to figure out how this whole thing started because if the President of the United States of America really did have a stroke, well Americans have a right to know. And if this was in fact the case, I would certainly hope that the Trump administration would admit to it, although with an election just months away, well who knows. Either way, it seems that a tweet from Joe Lockhart, who was the former White House press secretary under the Clinton administration, would ignite the match that would turn into a wildfire, which would lead to trending hashtags on Twitter. But it wasn't a report, nor was it a statement. Just a question. Did at real Donald Trump have a stroke which he is hiding from the American public. However, this question didn't come out of the blue. CNN obtained early access to a copy of New York Times reporter Michael Schmidt's book, Donald Trump vs. the United States, Inside the Struggle to Stop a President. In the book, Schmidt references President Trump's unannounced visit to Walter Reed Hospital in November of 2019, in which he claims to have learned, I quote, in the hours leading up to Trump's trip to the hospital, word went out in the West Wing for the Vice President to be on standby to take over the powers of the presidency temporarily if Trump had to undergo a procedure that would have required him to be anesthetized. Now before we go any further, I want to reiterate what I just said. The man's only source, that Vice President Mike Pence, was put on standby to take over and assume the role of president should anything happen to President Trump was that he learned. So pretty much we're taking this guy's word for it. Now that's not to discredit him by any means, but to simply highlight the fact that things got blown so far out of proportion, even though no one can verify if this ever happened. And to no surprise, President Trump and his administration were very quick to shut down the rumors that he suffered from any kind of stroke. To no surprise, the president took to Twitter claiming, I quote, it never ends. Now they are trying to say that your favorite president, me, went to Walter Reed Medical Center having suffered a series of mini strokes. Never happened to this candidate, fake news. Perhaps they're referring to another candidate from another party. Clearly he was once again highlighting that there is more reason to believe Joe Biden would be in failing health. But we need to go back in time to 2019 when Trump did make an unannounced visit to the hospital. In an official statement from the White House by former press secretary Stephanie Grisham, I quote, Anticipating a very busy 2020, the president is taking advantage of a free weekend here in Washington DC to begin portions of his routine annual physical exam at Walter Reed. However, as per CNN's chief medical correspondent Sanjay Gupta, many routine tests could be done at the White House, but more specific tests would see Trump going to the hospital. Gupta also mentioned how normally the hospital would be aware of someone with a high profile such as the president would be visiting far in advance. This was a last minute appointment it appears, which led to speculation something was wrong. In a 2018 exam, it was determined the president had high cholesterol and a common form of heart disease. He was advised to change his diet and exercise more, something that sources told CNN didn't happen. Now back to 2020, to no surprise, well on Fox News, Vice President Mike Pence was asked if he was put on standby, should anything happen to the president? This was his response. I quote, I'm always informed of the president's movements. Whether it was on that day or any other day, I'm informed. There was nothing out of the ordinary about that moment or that day. I don't recall being told to be on standby. I was informed that the president had a doctor's appointment. Part of this job is you're always on standby. You're vice president of the United States. I mean, he's not wrong, but as we know, we're talking about politics here. Anything we hear from CNN will likely be biased against Trump, and anything from Fox will likely be biased for Trump. But you know who would almost certainly tell the truth because if they were caught lying, they would lose all their credentials and would never be able to practice in medicine or health ever again? Trump's physician. Dr. Sean Conley, who is the president's official physician, released a statement which was distributed by the White House. Dr. Conley claimed the president, I quote, has asked that I address the recent public comments regarding his health. I can confirm that President Trump has not experienced nor been evaluated for a cerebral vascular accident, stroke, transient ischemic attack, mini stroke, or any acute cardiovascular emergencies as have been incorrectly reported in the media. The president remains healthy and I have no concerns about his ability to maintain the rigorous schedule ahead of him. 
as stated in my last report, I expect him to remain fit to execute the duties of the presidency. So I guess that answers that question. No, President Trump did not have a stroke, nor did he suffer from a handful of mini strokes, as a lot of media outlets have been incorrectly reporting. However, there was still a lot of speculation regarding why this visit to the hospital was unscheduled. As per reports, it wasn't planned on Friday, the day before the visit. But as previously mentioned, he apparently decided to go last minute because of some unexpected downtime. Dr. Conley also explained back in November the checkup was kept secret, if you will, due to what he referred to as scheduling uncertainties. He went on to explain, I quote, despite some speculation, the president has not had any chest pain, nor was he evaluated or treated for any urgent or acute issues. Specifically, he did not undergo any specialized cardiac or neurologic evaluations. So it is in fact possible that President Trump simply did go to the hospital for his yearly checkup. And although normally those working in the hospital would be advised that a VIP was coming through well in advance, it seems due to scheduling conflicts, they made the last minute decision. Another important note is that the president would normally take a helicopter over to the hospital, but instead decided to go with the motorcade. Now this could be used for or against his health. As one could argue, if his health was failing, it would be easier to pull over to the side of the road then land a chopper somewhere in case of an emergency. But on the flip side, a helicopter would get someone with an illness or failing health to a hospital much, much faster than a car, even if all the traffic is cleared. Ultimately, it seems the reasoning for his last minute appointment to this day is still being questioned. Of course, we could just believe what the Trump administration and his physician have said, that everything was totally normal and it was just a last minute checkup. But as we know, the man has lied in the past. And considering how the visit to the hospital didn't follow the normal protocol of a routine presidential medical exam, well, there certainly is reason to be concerned, even in the slightest. It's also important to note Trump's last physical was performed within less than a year of this unscheduled visit, so there was no real reason for him to be seen again. And following in the visit, Trump tweeted out that he began phase one of his yearly physical and that he was going to complete it within the year, saying he was in very good health. However, what is a little concerning is the fact that the results of this checkup or medical exam weren't released to the public, as is usually the case. In his last checkup, which was in February of 2019, Trump weighed in at 243 pounds, with his blood pressure being measured at 118 over 80, and was given an increased daily dose of medication to combat his high cholesterol. It was also revealed that he had a common form of heart disease. Yet all of this went down while there was a very strong belief that Trump was going to be impeached. Around this time, there was a lot of buzz that he'd be kicked out of office, and that the possibility of Vice President Mike Pence taking over could happen. As we know, that didn't play out the way some people had hoped, but it's possible that this story was somewhat swept under the rug because the impeachment news was just way more intriguing. Either way, it seems that President Trump didn't have a stroke, nor did he have a series of mini strokes. And although he has high cholesterol and a common form of heart disease, apparently it seems physicians deem him to be healthy enough to last until at least the end of this year when his first presidential term officially comes to an end. Now, depending on who wins this upcoming election, well, that's a whole other story. If people really are that concerned about Trump's health, I don't see how or why they could ignore the many issues Joe Biden appears to have at least while being interviewed on TV. Personally, I think maybe we should have a cap on how old presidential candidates can be. Not trying to discriminate age, but considering how someone has to be at least 35 years old to be considered, maybe we say if they're older than, I don't know, 70, they can't even run. Although I do know plenty of 70 year olds who are healthy and both mentally as well as physically fit, why are the majority of these guys 70 plus? The common retirement age is 65, so why is it that we think five years after the average person is said to retire, that someone in their 70s who would be expected to stop working full time for at least five years would be able to run one of the biggest, most powerful countries in the world. Just my personal thoughts. Now I wanna hear yours, so drop me some comments down below about how you feel in regards to everything I just talked about. From both Trump and Biden's health to the idea that a presidential candidate should be anywhere from 35 to 70 years old, give or take. For now, let's plot some comments from the video. What if David Blaine's ascension fails? Evan Dagger said, he'll splat on the ground like a cartoon character. So if you, if you checked out the video, uh, by the way, it happened and nothing, it was pretty uneventful. He did it, it was cool, but it was very like, he went up slowly and then he kind of came down and he parachuted down. It was cool to see, but nothing like crazy, crazy happened. Uh, but I, so in the video I said, like if, if he fails, like technically him failing meant like on his way up a couple balloons pop and then he slowly came back down. You know what I mean? I, it wasn't necessarily, he goes up and dies because he falls down. Like there's many ways for it to fail. Maybe the balloons don't go high enough. You know, maybe he doesn't reach the, the feet or the altitude that he wanted to reach. There was a lot of different, you know, things that could have happened that could have been considered a fail. Thankfully, he did succeed and he didn't die or get injured, but there was more than one way for him to fail, which didn't lead to him dying, which I said in the video, but it's okay. <laughs> Abigail Fenton said, video idea, what if you threw a toaster in the ocean? Would everything and everyone get electrocuted or not? Nah? Well, it would have to be plugged in, so probably not. If it was plugged in still, I don't think, no. I think maybe a certain area would be highly, uh, 
I don't want to. I don't know what, what the right word is I'm looking for here. I want to say a certain area could lead to people getting electrocuted, but I don't think all the water. I think eventually the electrical surge. Probably, again, I don't know for sure, I'm not the best with science, but I'm gonna say it would not ripple through the entire ocean. I'm gonna say at some point it would die out. Probably. Curtis Oliver said, bro, Chris Angel? That dude is a joke. You cannot even compare him to an actual magician. Well, growing up, I was a fan of his show. I, I was in Vegas, uh, you know, for a couple summers actually, while I was growing up, and uh, I saw his show at the Luxor, and my brother and I always just thought he was kind of funny, because like some of his tricks were, were a little far-fetched, and it was just very funny how every single time on his show, he would walk up to random people on the street with the camera right behind him, and the person would magically be mic'd up, because you would hear their audio perfectly as well, and he would go, so I've never met you before, right? Is this fair? I've never met you, I have no idea who you are, this is fair? Like, total strangers, right? I don't, this is fair, right? We're being fair right now. That was also very funny to me, because it's like, okay dude, you don't have to sell it that much, like we get it, you're a magician, like this is all, you know, for a TV show. So I was just a fan of him growing up, I personally think like David Copperfield is an incredible magician. I think, um, you know, these, these newer magicians, they can edit their stuff. So it's hard to tell what's legit, what's not, much like Chris Angel. So uh, I think the ones that you see in person that are good with sleight of hand, those are the ones that are, are the top dogs for me personally. But anyways, guys, that's all for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. You guys have been watching LBQ, and we'll see you soon.